Is this not the true path to salvation? The Christians who believe that children are born as sinners because of the original sin committed by Adam and Eve and Hindus who believe that children are born with the sins committed in their previous lives are doing injustice to even newborn children. But Islam teaches man that everyone is born in a state of purity and God has given them intellect and freedom to choose their faith and God will not show impartiality towards anybody and God will show justice to everyone and God will not show impartiality to a single soul. Islam is doing justice in this aspect. The atheist who refused to accept the creator in spite of very clear proof about his creative power as well as those religious groups that argue in the case of religion, intellect and reason are irrelevant, are doing injustice to the faculty of thought and reasoning. Whereas Islam commands man to accept faith, to accept the creator using intellect and through a comparative studies doing justice in this aspect. The humanists who clamor for unbridled freedom of individuals, including the right to consume liquor and drugs, including the freedom to indulge in homosexual and lesbian relations, to have extramarital relations, etc., doing injustice to human nature. Same is the case with those religious groups that encourage people to live a life of asceticism without family, without children, without good food, and denying oneself all the material bl blessings that Almighty God has given to us are doing injustice towards the human nature. But Islam allows man to eat and drink, except those that are injurious to your health and harmful to the society. To live and enjoy, but within the moral code. To earn and spend, but should not be extravagant, is doing justice in this field. The Western capitalist, whose sole aim is to amass wealth, create monopoly, oppress the poor and deprived, and deny the working class they do, are doing injustice to the financial rights of man. Same is the case with communists who argue that the wealth of the nation belongs to the working class and only they can enjoy the wealth are doing injustice in this regard. But Islam allows man to earn through proper and honest manner without indulging in those activities that are harmful to the society by giving the working class their due, without exploiting anybody, and further states, even that wealth belongs to Almighty God, and man is only a trustee, and as such, he has to give a part of his wealth to the poor and needy, is doing justice to the financial rights of man. The Nazis of Germany, who killed for Aryan supremacy, the Serbs of Yugoslavia, who fought for Serbian supremacy, the Brahmins of India who foolishly claim that they are the upper caste, and the whites who do not consider blacks as human beings are doing injustice to the human society. But the glorious Quran says in chapter 49 verse 30, O mankind, you have been created from a man and a woman. You have been differentiated into nations and tribes only to know each other. The person who is righteous before God, near to God, is one who is righteous. I can just continue to explain a lot of things about it, about the relevance of Quran. Still, Islam in this modern world is unfortunately the most misunderstood religion. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the most misunderstood person, religious leader. The glorious Quran is the most misunderstood scripture. And Muslims, the most misunderstood people. There are two reasons for this. One is the deliberate vilification campaign orchestrated by the Western media to malign. 
Islam, Muslims, and our dear Prophet. The other reason is the behavior of Muslims. When we point our accusing fingers at others, first we have to point our accusing fingers at ourselves. We do not show compassion and love towards others. You know, once a street boy was staring at an expensive car. When the car owner came, he asked the car owner, how much you paid for the car? The car owner said, my brother presented this car on my birthday. Then the little street boy said, I wish and stopped. The car owner thought what the boy intended to say is that if he had a brother like that, he would have got a car. But the following words uttered by the car owner really surprised, the, uttered by the street boy, really surprised the car owner. The street boy said, I wish I could become like the brother who had presented the car to you. The car owner asked the little boy to get inside the car and gave him a ride. After some time, the boy requested, can you drop me near my house? Again, the car owner thought what the boy wanted is to show other street boys that he is traveling in an expensive car. When the car neared a hut, the boy requested to stop. He got out. He went inside a hut, and when he came back, he was carrying his young, crippled brother. Pointing to the car and the car owner, he said, his brother presented this car on his birthday. I would work hard, make lots of money, and I will present a car to you. I will make you sit inside that car, and I will take you to all places which your little eyes wants to see. Your little heart wants to be, but your crippled leg cannot take you. That is my dream and hope. Think about that little boy who was born in poverty, lived in poverty, but wanted to sacrifice everything for his crippled little brother. Emperor Alexander, on his deathbed, called his dear friend and told him, when I die, make two holes in the coffin and put my both hands outside. Let the whole world see the great Emperor Alexander who had amassed wealth that no man could dream of. Emperor Alexander who had captured lands that no man could imagine. The Emperor Alexander who had victories over all his enemies. The Emperor Alexander who was an enemy to all emperors and rulers is leaving this world with empty hands. The same is our case. We cannot take our expensive cars and mansions to the other world, only our good deeds. If we want real happiness in this world, if we want tranquility, we have to be true believers. R.V.C. Bordel, the famous writer, after participating in the Second World War, he was so depressed, he wanted to commit suicide. Accidentally, he met Ted Lawrence, the famous Lawrence of Arabia. Ted Lawrence advised him to spend some time in Arabia. In those days, the Arabs were poor nomad people. They did not have supersonic jets or expensive automobiles. They did not have refineries, oil fields, or supermarkets. Their greatest wealth was camels and sheep. And bodily was on move with a rich Arab. And one day, a strong sandstorm struck the area. Bodily was frightened, but the Arab was cool. Bodily apprehended imminent death, but the Arab was calm. Arab lost all his camels and sheep. Still, he was patient. After the storm subsided, Bodily asked him, are you not frightened of death? Are you not sad about the loss of your wealth? The Arab smiled and answered, why should I be sad? Why should I be afraid? Allah gave me this wealth and if Allah takes it back, why should I be sad? Allah gave me this life and if Allah takes it back, why should I be frightened? That is the faith. And I'm concluding. Once the preacher said at his deathbed, 
When I was young and when my dreams had no limits, I thought of changing the world. As years passed, I realized that is not possible. After some years, I decided to change my dear country. After some years, I realized that is not possible. Then I decided to change my society. After some years, I realized that is not possible. At the fag end of my life, I decided to change my dear family. As years passed, I realized that is not possible. And on my deathbed, I realized the ultimate truth. It was I who ought to have changed first. If I had changed first, through my example, I could have changed my family. And through the example of my family, I could have changed my dear society. And through the example of the society, I could have changed my dear country. And through the example of my dear country, I could have changed the whole world. We should not be as unlucky as the preacher. After this, there's a short question and answer session. Kindly ask only relevant questions and judge my answers. I repeat, judge my answers on the basis of Quran and Sunnah. If any of my answer is in conflict with Quran and Sunnah, it is a duty to accept the Quran and Sunnah and reject my answer. And if I fail to give an answer, that is not the limitation of Islam, it's my limitation, understand that. Allahumma ufir lil mu'mineen wal mu'minat wal muslimin wal muslimat Allahumma hina alal kitabi wa sunnah wa mithina wa imani wa tawba Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa kinara da abanna Assalamu alaikum I would prefer if you, I'll be happy if you do not clap hands what I believe and what I've understood is that there is an example shown by our dear Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Jazakallah Khair Shaykh for that very interesting talk and I hope that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala opens our hearts to that and that we are able to follow it. Now we're going to have a question and answer session quick before we move ahead for the Asr Salah but uh, just before that we're going to have question and answer session Anybody who has a question from the brother's side, we have two mics here in this hall that have been arranged. You may queue up and we'll take the questions, inshallah. Shall we have the first question from the brother's side? On mic number one, on this side. But before that, I would uh, request the questioner may pose a question by naming himself and the occupation. Any non-Muslims will be given first preference, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Walaikum uh, assalam. I am Salim. Uh, I'm just a student. Uh, my question is, you said about the preacher who said I should have changed myself first. But how should we start by changing ourselves? Alhamdulillah. My young brother put forward a very relevant question. We have to change ourselves. So how we can change? Where should we start? Without any doubt, we have to start from the Quran. We have to start from the teachings of our dear Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Quran and our dear Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given us guidelines to the entire gamut of human life. And Islam specifically teaches us that man has got a responsibility towards the Creator and towards himself, towards his wife and towards his kids, towards his parents and towards his relatives towards fellow beings, towards animals, towards nature. And unless and until, as per Islamic perspective, a man fails to discharge these obligations, that he is a failure in his life. So my dear friend, we had to read Quran, 
understand its meaning, read the sayings, understand the sayings of our dear Prophet and follow that in our life. And we should understand one thing. Our aim for wealth has eclipsed everything. If we are after our years up past, if a person is a failure as a father, failure as a brother, failure as a husband, failure as a son, failure as a relative, failure as a friend, failure as a fellow being, then he is a failure before Almighty God. And if he is a failure before Almighty God, then definitely he is a failure in this world and in the world hereafter. So as a beginning, I'll tell you, have a conviction that there is God and have a conviction that Allah will resurrect us after we have become dust in our graves. And we will be held accountable for each and every one of our actions. If we have got that conviction, naturally the change will come. To conclude, go to Quran and go to the sayings of our dear Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let that be the beginning of change. The religion that is acceptable to Almighty Creator is Islam. When we point our accusing fingers at others, first we have to point our accusing fingers at ourselves. Thee alone we worship and thee alone we seek help. Allah gave me this life and if Allah takes it back, why should I be frightened? That is the faith.